Because there's another one here as well. That's better. Uh, when I was um, planning to submit a talk here, I was initially thinking of presenting some of my own research from experimental psychology. But then I saw that one of the topics that was of interest here was on teaching bays. And so I thought that I would talk about my uh, experience with teaching Bayesian uh, methods uh, for the last few years. So um, I'm obviously going to talk about teaching Bayesian data analysis to social scientists. And um, uh, if you're interested, my Twitter handle is xmjandrews. Uh, Tom Bagley, who is, uh, I'll explain, my colleague uh, doing this teaching, uh, his uh, Twitter is SeriousStats. And this is the handle for the workshops themselves, which I'm going to explain. Uh, this, by the way, is just the this talk. If you want to get these slides, um, it's available there on GitHub. Okay, so just in terms of some background, um, the uh, Economic and Social Science Research Council in the UK, which is the main uh, funding body of social science research, uh, had an advanced training initiative uh, whereby they funded advanced the training on advanced topics in social sciences. Um, and my colleague Tom Bagley, Professor Tom Bagley, um, and I got a grant to teach a series of, work, of workshops on Bayesian data analysis to uh, social scientists, which would be uh, re researchers in social science at, at, at any level from postgraduate student upwards. And we, were, uh, we, we taught them starting in 2015 and then last year, and we're doing them again this year. And so that's the URL of the uh, workshops if, you, if you're interested. And basically, uh, each th these were day-long workshops. Um, as I'll explain, they, they're, there was a series of them each year going from introductory topics to advanced topics. Um, each um, workshop had about 25 students. Uh, we limited to that, and it was for anyone, as I said, anyone in the UK doing social science. And we were very uh, kind of generous in our definition of what, social, what kind of social science. There was no strict requirements there. It's basically open to anyone, really, but we advertised it to social scientists. And uh, because it was funded by the ESRC, there was minimal um, fees. It was like £20 per day per um, attendee, £10 for students, and we even had um, bursaries uh, to cover travel expenses and accommodation by students. So we taught four workshops in 2015, and then, uh, depending on how you count, and I'll explain this, it was either six or nine last year, and again, we'll be doing either six or nine uh, this year. Um, and basically, um, each workshop, as you'd expect, was a combination of lecture style teaching and, um, and practical exercises. And all the practical exercises were done using R and were computer based using R and then with JAGS. And I'll explain, I'll go into uh, a bit more detail in a, uh, later, just why we chose JAGS and, and are not the alternatives. So all the practical exercises were, as I said, computer-based, R-based, and uh, involved, mostly involved JAGS. And um, then the teaching, uh, the lecture-style teaching, even that was sort of computer-based. So it would be me doing something with a computer involving R, and students could then, the attendees of the workshops, could follow along if they were interested in doing so. Uh, so in other words, it was trying to minimize the amount of lecturing, traditional lecturing, and trying to get it as, as interactive, as practical as possible. Um, and so the source code for most, probably not all the material, is, is there if you are interested in seeing it. So the, the, like the code, the R code we were using, and the JAGS code, and, and so forth. So I'll just give a, a general, uh, I mean, a brief description of these workshops and the content um, before I kind of go into what, we, what lessons we learned from doing these, these workshops. Uh, so basically, uh, the, 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 the first workshop, as you can imagine, was very introductory. 
It was the usual kind of topics that one would delve into if you were uh, introducing Bayesian methods to uh, people who perhaps know plenty about statistics but know little about uh, Bayesian methods. So we gave the sort of the usual examples of um, how uh, uh, doing an, an inference of something like the, the probability that someone is guilty of a crime given the information, the evidence, and given some prior information. And, and then examples of like inferring the mean of a normal distribution on the basis of some available observed data and some priors and so forth. We also spent quite a bit of time in that first workshop on uh, just the likelihood function and uh, just uh, the likelihood function as, as the means by which the data infer informs our, our probabilistic model. And then we also dealt with there a lot about um, hypothesis testing using Bayes factors, which is something I want to go back to uh, in, a, in a moment. Okay. So the, the second workshop then was basically a continuation of the first one. Um, there was, it, was, it was more or less going over the same stuff, but trying to do it in a more theoretically detailed and practically detailed uh, way. So uh, there was, we used examples of like Bayesian inference in, in analytically tractable problems like inferring the parameter of a Bernoulli distribution, inferring the rate of a Poisson distribution, inferring the mean of a normal distribution, integrating over the uncertainty and the variance and so forth. All of these problems that are sort of textbook Bayesian uh, data analysis problems, uh, analytically tractable Bayesian data analysis problems. And so went through all the maths there. That, so that was the idea behind this, this workshop, and I'll, I'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, the idea was just to go through it in detail, just like what uh, you describe a problem and you, you, you derive the likelihood function, you uh, look at the choices of priors, like conjugate priors, and then you work out the posterior distribution, you work out uh, posterior predictive distribution, um, algebraically I mean, and marginal uh, likelihoods and so forth. Right, so that was, there was kind of a lot of maths there. Uh, then there was also in this second workshop um, an introduction to probabilistic modeling using JAX um, and, and then using uh, the examples we went into in that second workshop were linear models, uh, so relatively simple uh, linear regression models, uh, maybe with categorical variables as well as continuous variables. But So the idea behind workshop two, and workshop two and, and workshop one really should be seen as a pair, was to give people the, fun, the, the fundamentals, um, the theoretical fundamentals and the practical fundamentals, so that a person could come away from these workshops with a enough to get started in their own data analysis. Um, so that was why it was particularly important to be able to, from my point of view, introduce something like JAGS, because once you get the handle of how to use a probabilistic programming language, you, um, there's, there's, you can go very far. Uh, so workshop three then was uh, getting on to more advanced stuff. And this was this was um, basically regression modeling, but particularly with emphasis on multi-level regression. So we introduced you know, general linear models and generalized linear models, logistic regression, Poisson regression, but most of the content, almost all the content, was dealt with, uh, dealt with multi-level models. And so we, what we're dealing with here were um, uh, things that have been discussed already today, uh, random slope models, random intercept models, uh, cross and nested structures, things like that. So these types of models um, are very practically valuable. Uh, so the models that we were dealing with in the initial workshops were, was quite standard, like the like linear models, um, as as we've heard many times today already. The multi-level models are uh, more sort of like practically valuable uh, for real-world data analysis. Um, now, the fourth workshop then, which I loved, which was my favorite one, was on the more advanced topics still. And so uh, we started with nonlinear regression um, using radial basis functions. 
and then went on to Gaussian processes, which you've just heard about as well, and then finite mixture modeling, which we've heard about as well today from Shravan, and, um, and then non-parametric mixture modeling using Dirichlet processes. Uh, and so all of this was done, even the Dirichlet process mixture models was all done in JAGS as well. Uh, so the Gaussian processes, the radial basis functions and so on was all done in JAGS. Um, you're starting to kind of get to the limits of what something like JAGS can do with, with these examples. But, but nonetheless, we, we stayed with that. Okay, so that's basically the, the overview. Um, uh, just in terms of the, these extra workshops, uh, workshops one and two proved to be to be particularly popular. So we were um, sold out in a few days. Uh, we had like 25 to 30 places and, and as soon as we advertised them, uh, we, they, they were sold out. Uh, we had people from all over UK attending. And so what we did was we just put these on twice. So we had them on in April and we had them on again in, during the summer. Um, and then another issue we encountered was that initially we thought, um, we kind of assumed a certain amount of proficiency with R. And that was not generally the case. Not everybody who was interested in attending was familiar with R and was kind of comfortable with R. And so that was a problem initially in our first series of workshops in 2015. People who didn't know R were just uh, not keeping up. Uh, we're just getting lost during some of the exercises and that was, uh, uh, that was a problem. So what we did then was we just put on extra workshops, extra day-long workshops between, before each pair of Bayesian workshops um, on, on, on R. Um, and so uh, these, were, these were optional and they were free, in fact. Um, and uh, in fact, we opened them up to anyone in our university who was interested in attending. So I'll talk more about those as well. But these were just basically for people to have, get a familiarity with R um, if, they, um, if, if they so wished. Um, and so basically there are nine, nine workshops per year. We've done three already this year. We'll do uh, some more in uh, uh, June, July, probably early July, and then again next September. So uh, in terms of the participants, I, this is kind of quite interesting how it turned out. Um, it was open to uh, advertise to all social scientists. Um, our, our attendees, we had a very wide range, very much wider than I expected, in fact. So we had psychology, sociology, criminology, geography, human geography, particularly linguistics, neuroscience, economists, plenty of economists, um, epidemiology, education, business studies, and there were probably others as well. So there was a very wide range. Now, I don't have uh, hard data on the number of attendees um, and their backgrounds for all the um, uh, workshops that we've done since 2015, but this is just some information on the workshops we did this month, uh, about two weeks ago. Um, about 50% of the attendees were from psychology, right? And so that was usually experimental psychology, experimental and cognitive psychology. Not, not always, but nearly, nearly always. Uh, about 50% were, were PhD students, and then 50% were, um, well, P above PhD students. So um, lecturers, postdoctoral researchers, professors, even, and so on. Um, of the attendees, um, they rated themselves in terms of their general statistic knowledge on average at around you know, 5 to 6 out of 10. So we just asked them, like in general, how much do you know about statistics on a scale of 1 to 10? And it came out to be around between 5 and 6. In terms of statistical computing, they rated themselves as around 3.5 out of 10. And there was a lot of variability here. There was um, plenty of people who were giving them, who were rating themselves at zero or one, um, and some of the people were rating themselves in terms of statistical computing abilities, um, knowledge of R, knowledge of whatever, any, any statistical software, um, at rating themselves at like eight and nine and so forth. So a real variety there. Um, in terms of Bayesian methods, as you'd expect, um, it, was, it was relatively low. In other words, people who were people were attending who were not particularly familiar with, with, with um, Bayes. And then, very interesting uh, to me, was that in terms of motivation, so we just asked simply, what is it that, why is it that you're here? What are you hoping to gain? 
and uh, approximately two in three said that they were interested in learning about Bayesian hypothesis testing using Bayes factors. So this was a major driving motivation for, for attendees. Okay, so in terms of uh, lessons learned, um, uh, these were things that were genuine surprises, at least to me, uh, some of which were pleasant surprises and some of which were le more, more less pleasant surprises. Um, so first of all, the delving into mathematical details that I described a bit earlier, that didn't go down so well. Um, and this may be sort of obvious in hindsight, but I don't know if it really is. It, it had to be that way. It just, it just didn't work out that way. Now, I, I, I feel strongly about this because I think that one of my frustrations with traditional statistics, as it's taught at least, is that it's very opaque. Um, in other words, we're given sort of uh, recipes uh, for what to do in certain situations, but we're told not to worry about the details. So, like, here's a formula, an F statistic or whatever. Don't really worry about where it comes from, just use it in this situation when these criteria are met or something like that. Now, I, I, I think that's a very bad way to do statistics generally, and I think that it's, it would be a travesty if, if in teaching Bayesian methods we just taught Bayesian methods in that kind of opaque manner. So, and I feel like it's not necessary as well because, because Bayesian methods are very principled, at least as I see them, very principled. And so teaching those principles can lead to an understanding um, uh, of the, the, the methods uh, that would otherwise be lost. So that's why I wanted to go into that mathematical detail, but it didn't. Re it, it, it's not that people disliked it, but they found it very overwhelming. So uh, what to do about that is, is interesting. On the other hand, though, a very pleasant surprise was that working with JAGS, and I don't think it's just JAGS, it's just probabilistic modeling languages, worked out very well. So in this, uh, we, we say we're going to do a certain type of, for example, regression, and we get the JAGS model and um, you know, write it and run it and look at the, um, the, the samples that are drawn from it and so forth. And this, I think, was, w just worked out very well, that people could see very clearly just the, the model that they were, they were using. Uh, so the, the, um, the uh, likelihood model the, um, and the priors were made just completely explicit, right? And, and your choices, um, uh, uh, the choices that you had available to you were also very clear. And so this worked out very well. I think it gave a kind of a clarity to um, the, the analysis that wouldn't otherwise be there. And it it, there was no sort of problems with, with uh, the implementation of this. Be, being comfortable with R is, is vital, um, but these pre-workshop boot camps that we had were perfectly adequate to bring people with zero experience in R up to speed, which was very reassuring. So some people who basically barely heard of R had everything they needed um, to do everything we were covering um, just from that one day. And so it, it, was, it was even, R has a reputation as being something that's difficult, and I think that that's un, untrue. Uh, now, software problems can be a real problem within workshops. Um, I should say that remarkably there were, there were very few of these and, and everybody brought along their own work um, laptops and so we had dozens of people with all different types of laptops, all different versions of uh, installations and the vast majority of them had zero problem installing R and R Studio and JAGS and all the libraries uh, for R. However, though, there were a few problems uh, occasionally, and these were real problems. We really had to sort of take breaks, bef um, or rather use the breaks uh, to be able to get people, get their computers working, because if they couldn't, it was sort of, they just couldn't keep uh, up with the workshops. So what to do about that problem is, I think, an important one to think about. Some alternatives, um, some possible uh, options would be to use like a server, like an uh, R Studio server. However, though, I do think it's valuable for students to have their uh, to to have their own laptops, so that when they're 
after the workshop they can just go immediately into doing the, the data analysis themselves. So, um, and then a big issue for me was that um, uh, for most attendees, really, um, many to most attendees, Bayesian data analysis just means null hypothesis testing in another way, right? And with Bayes factors. So it's sort of like there's Bayesian methods equals Bayesian hypothesis testing equals Bayes factors. And for me, for us generally, um, Bayesian methods are about much more than that. Right? So it's flexible probabilis probabilistic modeling. Right? And, and we've heard so much of, of this uh, throughout the day. Um, and so trying to convey this to, to students uh, was something we had to we had definitely had to consider. And in fact, um, even as well, just the old, it's seeing Bayesian hypothesis testing as a type of model evaluation and seeing that there is many other ways to look at model evaluation again was um, was something uh, that, was, that was students were kind of stuck on and then a final point is perhaps uh, the age of jags um, and bugs is now over uh, maybe not but uh, it's certainly uh, when we were proposing these workshops in 2014 um, Stan was new. It wasn't clear at that point that it was um, the, the tool to choose. Um, I think as time has passed, it is clearer uh, that it is the, the pick of, of, the, of the options available. Um, so we have bugs, jags, uh, pi MC, um, and Stan. And of all those, I think now Stan is the preferred choice. So you know, we've heard some things today about what Stan might not be able to do as well as JAGS. But nonetheless, I think there's some clear reasons for choosing Stan, not just the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, uh, but I think the community that has grown up around Stan, uh, the um, extensions to Stan that are being provided, I think is much greater seems to be much better now than, than Jack's. Okay, so uh, some just recommendations where I'd like to go with this. I, I, it was a great experience. There's um, a lot of demand for uh, Bayesian, um, being, being taught Bayesian methods. The number of people, as we've just heard in the last talk, the number of people who are interested in learning about Bayesian methods definitely is increasing. As I, and as I said, we were sold out within days uh, for this. Um, uh, if, to, if we were to do these next year and the years after, I would like to break them down to kind of three levels and the introductory levels and just going over the fundamentals, just what is Bayesian data analysis. And there I think I'd like to emphasize, you know, flexible probabilistic modeling and then deal with, you know, in depth Bayesian hypothesis testing as well. Uh, in a sense to kind of get it out of the way and also because that's what people want. Um, it seems people who are, who are interested in learning Bayesian methods want to learn about Bayesian hypothesis testing. Um, so at an intermediate level then, um, I uh, see sort of the main topic here as uh, regression modeling, uh, multi-level, general and generalized linear models. Um, and so that would include things like robust re regression, model checking, and, and, and things like that. So, you know, there's whole textbooks um, which are just on that sort of intermediate level there. And I think you can get extremely far. And then there's the advanced topics. And here, this is just a big set. Um, and it, it would be impossible to deal with all of them in a few days but I think you could deal with all of them. In, in, you, could, you could choose a, a, a number of them and deal with them um, in, in, a, in a few days. So those advanced topics, the important ones for me would be the nonlinear regression using radial basis functions, Gaussian processes, things like that, latent variable modeling, mixture modeling, finite mixture modeling, um, um, non-parametric mixture modeling using Dirichlet processes. And then another extremely important one, something we've heard about plenty of times a day as well, is time series modeling, uh, nonlinear time series modeling, and so on. And then other topics which are of interest, particularly to social scientists, 
causal modeling, structural equation modeling, and then something which I think one has to deal with um, uh, is Bayesian machine learning, Bayesian deep, deep learning, and so on. So it seems to me like there's kind of a tradition of data analysis, which is using Bayesian methods, and then there's machine learning, and uh, which, is, which is often using you know, very advanced tools, which is not clear exactly how they relate to Bayesian methods. And I think that what one can definitely do that uh, relation and show the relationship between that. And I think that's something definitely to deal with as well. Uh, so to go into uh, Bayesian neural networks uh, and, and so forth. And so um, that's, that's, that's the end. Thank you.